regarding a Christian's position of being separate from the world, we're going to just read some key scriptures. I'm sure that many have read these scriptures before, but let's try to clarify them with uh, reasoning uh, from God's word and, and what we know is truth from the meanings of those words used in those scriptures. Uh, we're going to read 2 Corinthians 6, 14 and 15. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Wow. Do you know how a yoke works? Have you ever seen two animals that are put under a yoke? They walk side by side. I've seen it with oxen. Well, it says here, do not become unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now, in the previous video, we know that the surname is a Gentile name, which identifies you as a heathen and a beast, because those that don't know the law will die like a beast. And according to the definition of 1755 Samuel Johnson's Dictionary on Gentile, it says someone without a covenant with the true God, someone who doesn't know the true God. So it could be possible that if you bear a name that identifies you as a Gentile, then you'd be identified as someone with no covenant with the true God? Logically, that makes complete sense. So, the given name is real. I'll say that solely again. The given name is real. The surname would be fictitious and Gentile and not real because the Gentiles came up with their own idea of a name, right? Because if they didn't want to believe in the true God, then they would come up with something that's fictitious during their journey until God's time clock says enough's enough. So it looks like they've got everything until then, right? They're controlling everything until then. Well, they only control those that basically entail their estate or promise to the promised land by using something that would identify them as having no covenant with the true God. Now, we know the promise only came through the seed of Abraham, which, of course, came through the kingly tribe, through Christ, through the tribe of Judah, which is not constituted of the nations. And we already read that in a previous video, that no tribe is part of the law of nations or part of the constitution of nations. So would a Christian name then be constitutionally exempt from the law of nations? Yes. Not when it's attached to the given, to the surname, because once you've done that, you've extinguished your inalienable position by touching something that is alienable. And a lien is a debt. So if I have a lien, maybe I'm part of Cain, right? Because now I'm leaning. Don't you lean on a cane? Because you disabled Abel? You were Abel before you got involved in the Elian. So now you're no longer part of <laughs> the solution. Now you're part of a problem. And the problem is you keep on leaning on something that is a debt. And if you're a debtor, you're not part of the creditor who's Christ. Now we have credit and debit, Christian and devil. Could that be possible? Could you be carrying both in your name and expect to be identified as part of those that believe in the remedy? Can you be grace and legal all in the same? The surname's legal. That's positive law. The Christian name is grace. That's natural. One is truth. One is fiction. Can you have truth and fiction in the same? Well, according to law, you can. That's called legal fiction. It's not impossible, but if you merge the two together, you've extinguished your inalienable position at that point for something alienable. We are going to read verse 15, and it says, well, we'll continue on verse 14. It says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness, and what concord hath Christ with Belial, or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
Do you know insurgents are infidels? Gentiles were considered heathens and infidels. A Christian, therefore, could not be identified truly with anything that's heathen or an infidel. So, no, you can't be a Christian Gentile. That would be a pretty serious legal view from looking at. No, you can't be Christian Gentile. You may think you could be Christian Gentile, but you can't. Even a legal view from an expert would tell you, you can't be Christian Gentile. Now, if you want to be Christian Gentile, that's like being truth fiction. Good evil. Good evil. No, you're either good or you're evil. But you can't be good evil. We're going to go into Romans 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, when you do your will, which isn't God's will, you will need a lawyer, because that one you're going to pay for, because that only works for the surname. Only surnames do their will. God's will is free. One will cost you, one won't. Now, we know it seems to be, the word conformed would be to be part of something. If I'm going to be conformed, well, the word conformed leads to the word fashion. It's very fashionable to have a surname. People actually even think it's actually got some kind of elegance to it. Oh, I'm better than this one. Taylor's better than Smith and vice versa. Well, that's fashion. That's something we place in a way that has nothing to do with substance. It's external. It's like putting on errors. More like putting on errors. Therefore, we're all under one under Christ, and therefore there would be no distinguishing mark other than that of love, and therefore we would not want to think we're better than somebody else. But if we want to bet on that, we want to be better than someone else, then we end up in gambling. Then you end up in insurance pooling. That your name is going to be better than somebody else's out there. We're going to read 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Oh, Gentiles were unclean, weren't they? Could a Christian touch what is Gentile and not be unclean? Well, we know that the test of Job was all about whether or not man would serve God for love and not for monetary reward. Did we fail the test when we said we wanted to be compensated for everything we do within the aggregate? Is not the word job, official public business for private dishonest gain? So I take what is in the public, which is common, and I take it back and I say, uh, I want private compensation gain for my participation in it. Now you know why they run the SIN program. To find out how much of that you're going to do and how much that system will penalize you until you wake up. I think to an extent, I do not believe it was a deliberate attempt on the participants that are in there now to be ignorant. But studying, due diligence, and knowledge will free us from that. 
because it has not changed from the past to the present. The scripture is stated, my people will perish due to lack of knowledge. It is up to you to educate yourself on these facts, these definitions of words that you use, how you speak, how you act, how you conduct yourself, and how you're going to go forward. Yes, it will be a leap of faith. We'll actually even place a really interesting clip from a video, from a movie, in there to actually help you understand that it will be a leap of faith. Our concern is that you're taking the time to watch these videos, but you're not there to rationalize your behavior. You're there to make a change. You have to go forward. So yes, you will walk at one, and you have to have enough faith to believe, and you will be brought before governors and kings for his namesake to state the truth. But you cannot be a volunteer in what is evil and expect God's grace. You cannot be exempt when you're a participant. And therefore, in accordance with Romans 13, which we're going to read and make one very quick clarification on, because this scripture has been used so improperly by the majority of Christians, claiming that they have to participate in what is wrong because they have to be subject to the higher powers. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, but the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Now remember, are they enforcing against you and penalizing you because you're doing something good or are they penalizing you because you're doing something bad? It's the latter. So, in understanding, if I'm doing something bad, then they're penalizing me. So if I'm using something that I'm not supposed to be using because I just merely perceive I have the right to use it and I'm entitled to it, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be penalized. But what Christians are thinking is because they, they're involved in something wrong they, that they think is right that that's their subjection. Well, the one that's going to do it right won't do something that's wrong, and therefore the scripture goes further to clarify, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Well, if you're touching something evil, no wonder they're penalizing and taxing you. After Christ came and died for us, you're supposed to be living in grace. And you'd represent his name. But if you're touching something that's unclean, and their world is based on a dead body corpus, that is an unclean thing. Gentiles were considered unclean. And if you're considered you're using something that identifies you as someone who has no covenant with the true God, let's not forget the fact that the surnames also represent coat of arms that have animals on the shields. And many surnames actually have animal names in them. Well, wouldn't that be a beast? Wouldn't that be putting a blemish or a defect on you as having a mark of a beast? Could that be the mark of the beast? And in fact, there was research done by someone, and we'll probably clarify it where someone can find it, but it was uniquely enough they found the social insurance program, social security program, related to something to do with the UN. And the fact was that it came under some chapter under the US, under chapter 666. I found that completely too coincidental. Even for my belief that sometimes some things seem very coincidental, that was too coincidental. And in fact, you know where, he, where most of the aggression came from on the party who put out that information? It didn't come from Muslim groups. It came from Christians. Because he said something that wasn't convenient for them when he, put the video, when he put the actual information up. So most of the blogs were just attacks from people who just didn't want to believe the truth. 
when it comes down to it, there will be a separation, the sheep from the goats. Goats produce kids which are stubborn like the parents, stubborn. Don't worry, every time you get a check and you write out the check, all you're left with is the stub. Could you be stubborn? Because you're not getting this information, because you're not seeing the truth of words, because it's inconvenient that these words could be what they are and therefore it's not working well with your commerce. Can a Christian abandon all and pull out what is not supposed to be in there? Wouldn't that be more subject to? It's the one who's attaching something to the name that doesn't belong to them is not subject to the higher powers. I can read that scripture a lot more with proper conscience by seeing that. How more subject to the higher powers could you be by not touching something they said not to touch? Just because someone made an offer to you from a third party, don't worry the fact that third party means tortfeasor, lawbreaker. All the people out there that are carrying third party liability are carrying it because they're breaking the law. That'll be all the social insurance or social security participants. And because all the lawyers make money on you breaking the law, does not change the facts. That you're doing something wrong. They advocate the devil's side. Do they advocate, do, do, does the law advocate or advocate grace? That's no, a good question. It's opposite, does it? Actually. It's the law doesn't advocate grace. If you were being judged by the law, we'd all be dead. We'd all be judged as our original father who brought us into sin. It brought about. So therefore, Certainly, we needed the second Adam, which was Christ, and therefore, it was his grace that brought us out of this. Read the scriptures daily. Do your own research. Do your own due diligence. If there is something that we're not seeing here out of the scripture, out of these words, out of these directions, out of the word of God, out of the rule book that directs us, then send us an email to show to the contrary. Be ye separate. Yeah, and a good uh, closing scripture on this would be Romans 6 and 14, which says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace.